Mm, I'm so nervous. Why am I so nervous? Hi, friends. My name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel, The Buzzed Artist, where you will learn to take fun and art and mix them together. And my channel will be primarily focused on painting on canvas with acrylic paints. And I'm going to be showing you how to create amazing pieces of artwork that you can hang in your house or give to a very good friend. This is my first ever video. I'm slightly nervous, um, but I'm always looking for feedback, always looking for new ideas so that I can share them with you all. So today what we're gonna do is paint this. Now this is a seascape. Um, this was inspired by my honeymoon in Santorini, Greece. This is a very common seascape when you go there. I was inspired by it so much I decided to paint it. And now I'm going to show you guys how to make this as well. So grab an apron, grab a towel, and grab some water, and come join me and I'm going to show you how to make this. Okay, welcome back. So here are the three colors you're going to be using for our paint. So I just got some... some three primary colors. First I got a primary black, then I have a primary blue, and I have a primary white color that I will be using for this painting. And that's pretty much it. You don't really need to use any other colors unless you want to, unless you want to get a little creative with it. And the three brushes we're going to be using, um, I have a, a more broad brush. This is to help carry my paint for large surface areas. Okay, then I have a smaller brush that has a square tip to it. Um, any brush that you have that's similar to this should be fine. I just need this to create some um, precise corners and to spread my paint, but not as wide as this. And last but not least, I have a small brush. This one has a slight point to it and it's angled. Um, and it's also a uh, fairly stiff. So I'm going to be using this to do my more precise, more controlled brush strokes. Okay? And once again, make sure that you have a water and some towels to help you along. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our, our wide brush, dip it in your paint water, and then what you're going to do so we're going to work on making the, the sky, um, the top portion of our sky, and that's a deeper blue color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of my blue, okay, I'm going to put it on here, and I'm going to take a little bit of my white. Now, I don't need too much white, just a little bit, okay, so I'm going to be combining my two colors together, create this really nice... Like, it's like a darker robin's egg blue, which is what we're looking for. So, once I got that color, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over here. And I'm going to start painting the top of my canvas, just like so. Okay? Now, you'll notice that I like holding my brush like a pencil, so I like to hold it very close. It's, um, it's my way of gaining control on my brush, okay? And I'm also making sure to get the corners and the top portions of my canvas so that I don't have to frame it or cover it. It already looks like it's painted and stretched. Okay, so I'm gonna do the sides. Now, I'm gonna carry this paint down all the way to maybe right around here. So, I'm just gonna carry that color. Okay. And if you have trouble spreading your acrylic, all you have to do is just add a little bit of water. And that should help carry your acrylic. It's, that's all it is. Brushes love water and your acrylic and your water are best friends. Always remember that. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit of my vacation in Santorini. We had such a good time, my husband and I, my husband's name is Ethan, 
and he's a fantastic, fantastic person. We went to Santorini. I rode up on a donkey going up the mountain. Now let me tell you something. Um, it was an experience to go ride on a donkey up that very, very, very tall mountainous cliff of Santorini, but I felt very bad for the donkeys. They ride them pretty hard, so I'm not gonna do it again, but it was, it was quite the experience for sure. But when we went up there, we hiked about 11 kilometers worth up through the mountains of Santorini, and looking down from the high cliffs where we were, I kept taking so many pictures. I, I could not stop taking pictures. It was, it was an unreal place. It, traveling really does open your eyes to what's really out there. It really does. Okay, so now that you've laid down your color here, we're gonna add another layer of color. And we're gonna add that layer of color at the horizon line here. And all you need to do is get some white paint, okay? So once again, you're gonna take your wide angle brush um, and I'm gonna just get them nice and clean. So I, I rinsed them off, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of white. I don't need too much, I need just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to carry it at the bottom where I started my blue, or I ended my blue. I'm going to make a line and then carry my paint up. So this is just a, it's a very simple blending technique. Um, but what I'm doing is, I'm just taking that, that white acrylic and applying it and bringing it up, okay? So this is great to do when your paint is wet, okay? So when your paint is wet, that is when all your colors want to blend together. Blending is primarily something you do when, you're, when your acrylics are wet. Acrylics love wet, um, other wet acrylics pretty much. They like to play with each other a lot. So I'm just going in and I'm adding in that, that white but you can see it's starting to blend really well with that blue I laid down before. That's what you're looking for. Okay. And now you can go back and forth. So if you're really not into how blue you have on the top here, you know, it's a little too uh, muted, you can just go back in again and add your blue and then keep blending, okay? Now, a common mistake I see a lot of, um, you know, a lot of beginner artists do is when they're blending, um, there's a, there is a clear banner where there's one color and there's a clear banner where there's another color. And the way to combat that, and I always tell this to anybody that does this stuff, is cross the lines with, with your brush. So if you got one color that you're doing here, don't just stay here. Cross the bounds, go into the other color. See how I'm going with my brush? I'm just blending it bottom to top. I'm, I'm breaking those bounds. I am crossing over the border, you know what I'm saying? So whenever it comes to blending, cross the lines. The colors want to mix. That's what blending is, okay? So always remember that when you're doing that and always think big, long, brush strokes, okay? And once you're done here, you have a sky. This this is the this is the premise of a Santorini sky. So, now that we have our sky, I'm going to show you how to do our ocean. Now, one thing that I noticed about the Mediterranean is that their ocean it well, first of all, let me tell you their oceans are unreal because it is crystal clear blue water. But in some pockets where the water is deeper, it's almost like it's a violet purple. It's, oh, it's gorgeous. You have to go and see it for yourself. I can't, I can't give it enough justice, but we'll take a trip by doing this painting, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do this. So where I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start now at the bottom of my canvas here because now we're gonna make our ocean. 
and I'm going to make that deep violet color that um, that this ocean does. <laughs> I'm going to take my blue. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of my blue. I'm just going to spread it very nicely on my brush. And I'm going to get to the bottom of my canvas here. And holding my brush, just like a pencil, I'm going to go with a broad stroke back and forth at the bottom of my canvas, okay? See how you got that really, really nice dark blue? So if you really want to get this even darker, all you got to do is just add a tinge of red to get that nice purple color going on with it. But you don't really need to. So I'm just going to cover, let's see, I'm going to go like right around here is where I'm going to end that, that dark, 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 dark blue. Okay. And don't forget to get the sides of your canvas. going to get the bottom portions as well. So if you're wondering where we are, we are actually in my living room um, of my two-floor condo apartment. So Ethan and I shortly moved in here um, before we got married and um, now we're just chilling, having a good time, enjoying the beautiful area. We are in Niantic, Connecticut. So for those of you who live in the Connecticut area, um, give me a like and uh, comment where you're from in Connecticut. Um, it's always cool to meet other artists and other people from the area and as well as from other places. I mean, holler at me if you are from a certain area of the United States or from anywhere, just comment below and tell me where you're from. I'm originally from Montreal, Canada, actually. Yeah, so I'm slowly moving south. <laughs> Hopefully make my way down to Florida. We shall see. Okay. See? Wasn't too bad at all, right? So. What we're going to do next is we're going to make the rest of our ocean and the rest of our ocean is um, it's it's a like a robin's egg blue so again with our brush I didn't I'm not going to clean it this time because um, we are only going to go lighter from here so I'm just going to take a little bit of my blue I'm just going to spread it on my palette and I'm going to take some white well, I'm probably going to take about this much white Spread it on my can on my uh, palette. So you see that color I'm making right there? It's like a, it's lighter, definitely a lot lighter. I'm gonna put a little more white. It's definitely a lot lighter than the um, the first ocean color that we set down. Okay, so I'm I'm kind of I'm making this kind of color right here. And then what I'm gonna do is what do we say about blending? Cross the border. So what I'm gonna do. I'm laying down that ugh, goodness. You know what? I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna make that color a little lighter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add even more white to that. I really want a difference here. Okay. There. That's what I'm looking for. Maybe just a tad more blue. Yeah. That's that's the color I'm looking for. It's like a it's like a pale blue. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, ah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm applying my color. I'm gonna dip my brush in a little bit of water to help carry the paint. So, I'm just gonna take my brush. Remember how I said cross the border? I'm crossing over with that lighter color over the darker one that we applied earlier. And you know what, it's seamless. It, you don't really know where the light begins and the dark ends, and vice versa. Isn't that cool? Okay. 
right, so I'm just gonna go ahead, fill that in. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in all the way to the top. To the top. Okay. Before our honeymoon, this is this is really a sad thing, but before our honeymoon, we hadn't gone to the beach in hmm, I want to say it was almost two years, two and a half years, something like that. We hadn't been to the, to the beach in two and a half years. Um, we were both working very hard. Um, at the time, we both had office jobs, so we were staying indoors all the time, paying bills and um, trying to afford our wedding. So times were a little tough, but now, after our honeymoon, our honeymoon was our kind of like our kickoff vacation of not having one for the past three years. Um, but when we got back, we vowed to ourselves we will never, ever, ever miss going to the beach for that long of time. So now, now we're trying to make it such that you know, once a month um, that we get out there. You guys are probably thinking, once a month? Are you guys crazy? I go like every day. Well, life goals. <laughs> I wish I was you. Because the beach is just, oh, it's so relaxing. And all you want to do is just sit down under an umbrella, read a book, sip some culottes. <laughs> so I'm again just carrying my paint. And I'm dipping into my water occasionally to help spread my paint out a little more. Now you might be wondering, do I need to gesso my canvas? Well, if you bought your canvas um, from a store, from like an art store, and um, there wasn't anything really special about it, more likely than not, your canvas has already been gessoed. So, um, gesso is kind of like a, a pigment primer that is, it's basically like, like your white acrylic paint, but it's a lot more diluted. And basically, it's just a binder. So when you put gesso on a canvas, it, it helps to um, have your acrylic bind to the canvas or to the medium that you're applying the gesso to. So for example, if you wanted to paint a, like a, a block of wood, for example, you would just want to apply a little bit of gesso to it first before applying your acrylic, so then that way your acrylic sits very nicely on top and doesn't get fully absorbed into the wood and poof, your, your creation disappears. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna actually tell you what I'm about to do here next. Okay, so we're at the horizon line and at the horizon line, that's when you get the lightest color happening here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna graduate now. I'm gonna put the big brush away and I'm gonna move on to my smaller brush. Again, um, the important thing about this brush is that it holds um, a bit more paint than the smallest one, but not as much. It, it's a smaller surface area so that you can carry paint but be more precise. So I'm just gonna graduate to this. I'm gonna dip it in my paint water. And I'm just gonna dip it in my white, okay? Just straight up. This is gonna work because your canvas is still wet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the horizon line and I'm just going to create a white line right across. And when I create that white line, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to blend it down, okay? So once again, I'm just taking that paint, spreading it across in a horizontal line. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to spread that paint down. Isn't that something? Pretty cool, right? So once again, 
my white line. And um, the way I'm, I'm spreading that paint with this brush, again, I'm holding it like a pencil. And I like, I'll use the term broad side of the brush. I'm using the broad, that broad side, not the tip. And I'm just taking the paint and I am just dragging it along very carefully. And then again with the broad side, just spreading the paint down. So now you have a sky and you have an ocean. Isn't that neat? You did that all by yourself, guys. First of all, give yourself a pat on the back, a little pat on the back, because it's not easy doing something that either you're scared to do or not used to doing, especially when it comes to sky and sea. A lot of people get nervous. So for having come this far, I'm very happy and very proud of you guys. So keep going. Keep trusting me, we can do this together, okay? So, you've created your sky and you've created your, your sea. Now we're going to create these beautiful, beautiful sharp rocks, uh, these cliffs. So, what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna use our, our, our medium-sized brush. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip it in my, my black this time. And I'm gonna add in a tiny bit of white. So I want to create this like uh, this like very deep charcoal gray. Okay, so it looks kind of like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the side cliff. So I'm gonna start probably a couple of inches below the horizon. And with my brush, I'm holding it like a pencil, and I'm using the tip so that I can get a more precise edge. So I'm just going to take my brush and make an outline of a cliff. Okay. And don't, don't be alarmed if you're not really liking the shape or you're not really into what you just made. It, it takes shape eventually after a while. So just trust me, it's gonna be okay. So, You've made your outline, and I'm gonna make another outline of another cliff. Now I'm gonna start probably in the middle of, this, of the first cliff we made, holding it the same way, and I'm just going to make another, another set of lines. And I'm just gonna carry it down off to the side of my canvas, okay? So what it looks like is your cliffs are kind of in a mid shot, so the rest of the cliffs are off to the left of your canvas, and these are the right most sides of the cliff, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make another little cliff um, that's kind of in the middle of the ocean here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add in another little cliff. Now, don't worry if your cliffs don't really look like mine. What you're looking for is something that's jagged and that kind of has a mass to it. Nothing, nothing too crazy, okay? Don't be nervous, it's okay. Everybody's cliffs are different. <laughs> and then I'm gonna make another one. So feel free to use, to do more, to do less. I like, I like to, um, I like to have like a lot of cliffs for my tumultuous spirit, I guess. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add some more cliffs. And then I got another little like rock formation. I use rock and cliffs inter interchangeably because English hurts, I suppose. So I'm just gonna make another set of rocks right here. Now all my rocks are different. Some have a lot more bumps, others are a little more smooth. It doesn't matter, it's, it's really up to you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill in the rocks. I'm gonna fill in the rocks with that color we made. Okay. Now this part's fun because it's basically like a coloring book. You can just fill in the parts of your rock. And now here's another little cool thing too. If you 
going in and mixing and your color comes out a little lighter or a little darker than the previous one, do not fret. It's actually okay. Rocks, especially when they're um, outside, <laughs> well, where else would rocks be? But when they're outside and they're catching the sun, they are reflecting a lot of different shades of their own color. Okay, so it's impossible to ever find a rock that is one color and one color only. In fact, you would probably look at it and be like, that's a weird looking rock, I don't know what's wrong with it, and it's, <laughs> and it's probably because it has one color and it's very odd. When you see something in nature, it has multiple colors to it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add the colors in. And again, if uh, your color is not exactly spreading, just add a little bit of water, and that will help your can, your um, acrylics to catch paint, or excuse me, your uh, acrylics to catch the water and thus spread out better. listen to music when I'm doing some artwork. Usually I'm a, I'm a big fan of like... <laughs> Actually, if ever you guys have heard my playlists, they're all over the place. I like anything from Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons, all the way down to ACDC, all the way down to Gwen Stefani. Um, I'm, I'm a really weird mix. Usher. Usher's fun. DJ Snake, all about it. <laughs> so I, I'm a huge, huge fan of uh, playing music or even watching videos on uh, the YouTubes. So, um, so comment below. What kind of uh, music do you like listening to? What kind of YouTube videos do you like listening to? Um, I love listening to comedy, especially on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of really awesome comedians that I like to. Listen to on the YouTube. There is one channel that I've been watching lately that I'm obsessed with, and it's called the, the Nostalgia Critic. Here's a little plug. Uh, you guys can shout out back to me. I would pee my pants and cry um, because I love you all so much. But uh, they are hilarious. They review a lot of old movies, especially movies that I grew up with. So, um, it's always a nice flashback. <laughs> cool, so here are our rocks. And I'm going to show you another little stylized trick. So with your brush, the same one you were using before, just dip a little bit into your white, okay? You don't want too much, just a little bit of white, just like so. And I'm just going to go onto the um, right portions of the rock and add in a little bit of a highlight. Now, like I said, remember how I said that rocks like to reflect light? This is, this is imitating that. Um, this is to show that your rock is reflecting light. Okay, so I'm just going very, very lightly on my canvas, very lightly with my brush. I'm just applying that, and I'm just going to go every every which way. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to be very specific on where I'm putting it. I'm just kind of paying attention to the right portion of my rock face. I'm just going ahead and adding those colors in. Okay. And the reason why I'm doing this, pure and simple, I just want texture. I want to add a little bit of um, more of an emotion to these rocks. So adding those very variety of colors really helps to wake up your, your painting a little bit. Okay, 
especially since your paint is wet, this is the perfect time to do it. Okay. So I'm going to, on this rock here, I'm going to do it on the left side because it's, I'm assuming the sun's like right around here somewhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that color in, just like so. And here I'm just going to add it on the top portions. You want to think about where your sun is, right? So if your sun's like right around here, think about how the shadows would look. Okay. And I'm using the broad side of my brush, so I'm just I'm just doing these very rough very rough surfaces. This is just a way to get the texture. That's that's really what we're doing here. are baby they're just they're just very hard lines and lots of surfaces so you can see already the details and the textures that are coming out from this and you can go back and forth so if you want to go darker if you want to add a, like a darker tone you can go ahead and just add in a little bit of black a tiny bit you don't need too much and just kind of add that in with the same kind of strokes okay so And this is a great way too, if you mess up, <laughs> you can cover it up a little bit, so no one will notice. So I'm just going to go ahead and add just little parts here and there. That's the beauty of paint, is that you're just getting the essence, you're, you're trying to capture textures and, you know, lights and all the stuff that's bouncing off of whatever surface you're painting. Okay. Now, I know what you might be thinking. These rocks look really weird because they look like they're out of place. They look like they're something out of a Salvador Dali painting because they're kind of like floating there. Fret not, because this, um, actually this is one of the final steps. Um, this is really, really interesting because once you add in that tumultuous wave or the waves that are crashing onto your rocks, you're gonna see a blending technique, which I'm gonna show you, which is gonna look fantastic, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna graduate down to our smallest brush in our kit, okay? This brush gives you the most control. It basically will follow any direction you give it because it loves you, okay? So remember this when you're working with this guy. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your brush, you're gonna dip it in your water. Okay, so I've got it nice and wet. Always lubricate your brushes. And then I'm gonna dip it into my white. Okay, now this part here is gonna be where the fun begins. So I'm gonna start at the horizon, okay? And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make squiggly lines. Waves are squiggly lines and there's a lot of them, okay? So remember this when you're doing waves, especially for, <laughs> I mean, where else would you do waves? For oceans, squiggly lines, and there's a lot of them, okay? Squiggly lines, and there's a lot of them, okay? So we're gonna take our brushes, and I'm just gonna start making a squiggly line. And I'm gonna start at the horizon because it's, it's a good way to kind of gain confidence and also to start to see how the waves um, begin to form. So my squiggly lines are, they're not loopy, they're not super undulated. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here, okay? So I'm going to take my brush, just like so. It's very, very subtle. See how I'm doing that? Okay. And what I'm doing as well is as I'm doing this, I'm adding another line on top and another line on the bottom and another line on top of that. So I'm just making a lot of squiggly lines, one on top of the other. 
And that's it. That That is the premise of a wave. So, just keep repeating over and over and over and over again, okay? That's all this is. Don't be scared. It's okay. So I'm just going in and adding one wave on top of the other. Now, one thing to remember when it comes to um, waves like this, you get a lot more concentrated waves at the horizon line, and as it, the water gets closer and closer to you, you being like right around here, the waves get further and further apart, okay? So that's that's a, another hint, another um, art tip, okay? So I'm just gonna go in, add in my lines, and I'm staying there. I'm, I'm staying very close together with them. Okay. This is always the fun part. I, my personal favorite color for acrylics is white. I love working with white because white is, um, I find it adds a lot of realism, um, especially when you've already laid down a bunch of color. I'm a huge fan of it. So I'm just going to start making my way down into the rocks and I'm gonna to start to space out my waves a little more. Not too much, just, just a little more. I'm still doing a lot of um, overlapping. I'm still playing around with it. Okay. I'm just going to go and fill in those blanks. See, stuff like this doesn't have to take a very long time. You just need to know that there's little secrets, that's it. I hate to admit it, but art is kind of like the biggest secret ever. It's all illusion, okay? If you got one brush stroke that really nails it, then you, you kind of have whatever it is that you're going for. And again, these waves, remember how I said? They're all just squiggly lines and there's a lot. That's it. It doesn't have to be this huge, grandiose thing. That's the beautiful thing about art, guys. It's accessible. It's something that once you kind of know the, the basics, the little tricks, you can do and replicate as much as you want, okay? So I'm just going in. Now my, my waves are getting a little more spaced out. Man, it actually looks really cool on looking at it from the camera angle here. I'm digging it. Okay. So, um, we're gonna keep going. Now, we're gonna start to make these very tumultuous looking waves. Now, from here on out, if you wanna make your waves not look as tumultuous and you just wanna keep going with this, go for it, do that. But I'm gonna show you how to make more tumultuous waves and these are gonna involve our lines going from just a straight line horizontally, horizontally to going in different directions. Um, and I'm gonna show you how they're gonna reflect against the rocks here, okay? So we're gonna start with our brush and I'm going to, with my line, um, I'm gonna to start to just form my lines around the rock. Okay, so I have, I have that wave. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See how my lines are starting to not go horizontally anymore? I'm kind of following the rock face here. Just like that. So I'm just going to take my brush and carry out the waves around the rock. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly bring it back to kind of like a middle or rather kind of um, like a horizontal wave so it's kind of like when you see ripples you, you create like one circle here another circle here and then eventually it goes back to the line okay so once again got my brush i'm following the rock face just like that, just like that, and then I'm just going to turn it out. Okay, once again, I'm just overlapping, just doing, doing my thing, 
Okay. And again, we're gonna do the same thing with this guy. So it's reflecting, then I got another one, then I got another one, and then eventually it it uh it um straightens out just like that. Now don't be don't be afraid if, if you mess if you messed up, if you're not really digging how one wave came out. All you gotta do is just <laughs> put one wave on top of the other and keep going. That's that's really the whole thing about ocean waves is that they are imperfect. They're everywhere. Okay, they're everywhere, and that's they're they're very forgiving. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add add some waves here, add some waves here, and what I'm gonna show you eventually is the um, like the foam of the sea as it crashes against the rocks because the waves are so tumultuous yeah uh, side note when you go to Santorini the waves are huge um, because it is super windy there okay so I'm just going to carry my waves horizontally if you want to make more tumultuous waves here you just got to make them more circular but I'm just going to calm them down a little bit on this side. And let's see here, so... And I'm just going to make another set of waves here. Not bad, right? Looks pretty interesting. So what you gotta do is just go one on top of the other, over and over and over again. Now I'm going to show you another really cool trick to make these rocks really blend into your background, okay? So we're going to make the waves crashing on the rocks. This is going to be a really cool effect and it's very simple. We're going to use our small pointer brush again, dip it in your white, okay? And I like to call this the dab and stab. Um, basically you're going to go to the rock edge where you are, are wanting to imitate the waves or the, the splash effect and you're going to start to just dab little white circles near the edge of the rock onto your, onto your ocean. Let me show you what that looks like. See that? So I'm just going to make a bunch of dots and I'm going to start to make the dots go a little a little all over the place at the edges because that's the wave, that's the um, that's the crash of the waves and I'm imitating that, okay? I'm gonna do another one into the rock face like this, okay? This is, you, get, you guys can see that, right? You can see that wave starting to form there. And I'm just going to add that right around here, just like that, okay? So when you really think about waves crashing, it's, it's the, it's just a lot of white um, foam, one on top of the other. That's really what that is. Okay. And I'm just going to carry this out so it looks a little bit more natural. And I'm going to carry that out into a wave like that. Okay. Once again, on this side here, I'm going to make another big wave spot splash right there. Just like so. Isn't that neat? It really starts to look real. It really does. Um, that's that's the really beautiful thing about painting. You get these really, really beautiful looking canvas. It's, it's awesome. Okay, and then I'm gonna also do that here. So now this is, it's up to you what you wanna do. If you wanna add more, more of the foam, the crashing of the waves, you know? You are totally entitled entitled to do that, but if you just want to 
not make it as crazy of a day and you just want it to be a very calm sea day, you don't have to add these. And that's, that's the beautiful part about all this. So I'm just gonna add another set over here. Okay. Remember, you want a lot. You just want a lot. Okay, so I'm just gonna add that here. See how I call it dab and stab? <laughs> For good reason. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that here. Okay. And I'm adding I'm adding my dots, you know, I'm kinda going up up onto the cliff a little bit to show how how deep and how violent that wave crash was. I'm also carrying it out into the water back here. Okay, just like that. Now, I'm just gonna add another finishing touch onto this rock face as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that here. Isn't that pretty? Sometimes, sometimes I just get so impressed with myself, right? <laughs> just, you know, it, it's, and it's good to be proud of yourself. It's good to, to take that time and just look at the work that you just did. You created something. You took some time, you put something together, and you created something that looks totally magical. Okay? So you got here a very violent looking <laughs> wave. Violent in a good way. This is the, the crash of mother nature. Okay? This is this is life. This is this is how life goes. Just like that. And then last I'm gonna show you one tiny little little touch. And that is our seagull friends. Okay, so I'm gonna add some birds flying off into the distance here. This is really, really cool and really fun because you add more life to your painting, okay? So what you're gonna do is one more time, you're gonna take your small brush, okay? And you're just going to make two brush strokes to make a bird, okay? So all you're gonna do, I'm just gonna bring my canvas up to here so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna start like right around here and I'm gonna take my, my brush, I'm gonna do one line like that do another line just like that we just made a bird isn't that cool isn't that awesome so that's one bird that's another bird and I'm gonna probably do another one right right around here and that's another bird isn't that something isn't that cool so you can add more birds if you want you can go ahead and add more waves if you like, or you can go ahead and even add some final finishing touches. But that's it. That's how you make a beautiful Santorini coastline, imitating the beautiful cliffs, the tumultuous waves, the windy day, and the beautiful little land life birds that are just floating around looking for some fish to eat. <laughs> All right, well, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any suggestions, uh, any feedback, or would like to suggest an, another painting for me to do, all you have to do is comment below. And show me your artwork. If you followed along with me, please message me or leave a comment of the picture of how yours came out. If you have any questions, any feedback, uh, please let me know in the comments section below. Guys, it was amazing hanging out with you. My name is Amanda, and be sure to subscribe for more videos. Mwah. Have a wonderful rest of your day.